Hello viewers, SuperGT here. So in this one, we're going to try and find out if it's possible to defend for an entire race. As you can see, we're on pole position. I set a fairly decent lap for this uh, daily race C in uh, Group 3 at Autopolis. So we're going to go through two examples to begin with because for the first two races, it wasn't actually totally necessary to defend. So sometimes the best form of defense is offense just go quickly so that the other cars aren't close enough you see here at the start of lap three the gap opening up to about 1.3 driving the porsche 911 which seemed to be one of the go-to cars for this race by the end finishing in 17 minutes 58 seconds and second place was five seconds off so we didn't have to defend at all really just use your pace get away and win that way we go again in the McLaren, so not as good a car as the Porsche, and um, therefore it's going to be a slightly harder challenge. It's up against the same people, so we'll see a slight difference here, presumably. By lap six, the gap was about 2.9, just shy of three seconds, and we've got this Audi R8 behind, and you might think that's quite a big gap, but he did bring it down to about two seconds. It finished here about 2.5, so that guy was catching up, and um, again, though, we didn't have to defend. Total time 17 minutes 59, so only one second slow actually than the Porsche. So we get another win. So I'm actually, I've won two races, which is actually very rare in a row. But we're going to go again, but this time we're going to choose the true Scheisenwagen, the BMW Z4, which is world renowned for being one of the worst cars in Group 3. But we're going to find out exactly how bad it is in our third race so of course always jump in do a couple of laps practice and the first thing i found especially through this final sector here is just really understeer it just takes an absolute eternity to turn basically an aircraft carrier would turn quicker than this thing but we'll see how good it is in the race because i'm presuming we're gonna have to defend here so the guy who finished second in the last race is starting second here he only finished two and a half seconds away in the R8 up against the McLaren. This car is no doubt going to be not as good, especially if you can't turn as quick as an aircraft carrier. So 10 laps, Autopolis, Group 3 is underway. And the thing about Autopolis is actually that it's fairly easy to defend around this track. It's actually very hard to overtake. Same kind of statement really, I guess. But if you can just make sure you don't commit any massive errors, anywhere then you can defend it's possible but we'll see how this one progresses throughout because i am going to come under pressure you see in the background there the other guys are fighting that's just going to give me maybe a lap of rest where i don't have to defend don't have to block so hopefully they can start fighting for all 10 laps but uh, hopefully well hopefully for them they're going to work their differences out and actually settle down into the race so coming through lots of long corners here especially in the final sector but th this is exactly what doesn't uh, lend itself to this car as we said really understeery feels like a boat doesn't turn in just takes an age basically it's fairly stable must be said doesn't really have much drama it just takes ages to do anything that you want it to do but it's actually fairly simple to drive uh, for anyone who's driven the lewis hamilton dlc will know all about understeer where basically that Mercedes you have to drive just doesn't really turn. Uh, so this is almost like the same. This corner here is painful, it takes forever. I've, actually, I've aged about 20 years just going around that one corner right there. Okay, so at the end of lap one, just two more corners or one more corner. No, two more corners, I guess. Left to go. Still this really long right-hander again. Loads of really long corners here. And then you've got this left kink onto the straight. And now the Audi R8 in second. I think he's been released by the pack behind. I'm trying to break the slipstream but he's following me exactly so I can't really do anything about that. Into turn one, breaking on the 100 board. Difficult corner that as you go over a little crest on the way in on the exit using the kerb and then powering out towards the second corner. Okay so on the brakes looking for the little dirt road on the left or there's a little tarmac road and you kind of break on that and uh, you see yourself into this little complex here quite nicely. So defending, the strategy of defending, you kind of got to really just pinpoint the places where you're most likely to get overtaken and you don't really want to defend 
you know, I, I see a lot of people defending sort of too much and it just puts them out of position for the next corner. So you don't want to defend if you don't have to defend. You just have to make sure you wait until the actual right time to do it. Otherwise, you're just losing a lot of time and you're inviting more people into the party. Although that can help because I found that sometimes defending against one person can be harder than defending against a group because at least if there's a group, they can start fighting against each other. So this guy in second, you can see there, there's a gap to the Corvette in third. He doesn't really have to worry about that Corvette, not too much, really. Whereas if the Corvette was right on him, then he'd have to worry about that Corvette as well. So he's just kind of diverting his attention elsewhere. But at this point here, he's, he's, he's getting slightly closer as we end uh, lap number two. And it's quite clear already that my car isn't quite as quick as I want it to be. We'll see what the lap time is here. In the Porsche you can do sort of mid to low 46s throughout the whole race. As we come across the line here it's going to be a low 47. So it's a good second, three quarters of a second slower than what I'd be doing in the Porsche. So coming up into turn one, again not quite close enough so there's no point defending. So really just looking at two things here. Obviously the track, uh, but if you forget about that, in terms of defending you look at the radar you're looking at uh, the timer on the left hand side and just seeing exactly how close they are. I suppose just looking behind as well, that's three things. Three things you can do to keep track of your opponent's whereabouts. And uh, into this one, just taking a narrow line on the way in, going a little bit deep, you see there the Audi R8 a lot more hooked up with the Apex. I was a little bit off, so that's just a warning sign. Make sure I don't open up that inside. And that's the thing about this track, and I suppose defending in general. Just don't allow the inside uh, to be a, to be an option. So I'm going to move to the inside here. Looking at the radar, he's gone to the right. Just stays to the right. Gone a little bit deep, but we've managed to hit the apex still. And we keep the position. So that was the first time we actually had to properly defend in this race. It's only lap three. So this is going to be quite a difficult one. And um, this is, as I said earlier, though, one of the easier tracks to defend at. I suppose that hairpin at the top of the hill... That's one of the places. This corner here, this right-hander, people can nip up your right-hand side here if you go too wide. So you don't want to leave too much of a space on your right-hand side through that one. And then, of course, you've got the uh, main straight going into turn one. So I, I'm, I need to make sure that this corner is a good one. My exit here, you're looking for the tarmac road on the right there, and they begin to st uh, start powering out towards the outside onto the main straight. Up towards turn one, this is one of the best overtaking opportunities, probably the best. He's going to tuck into the slipstream, I'm going to wait for him to go left and then go left and follow him and squeeze him to the outside. Obviously you have to leave a car width so make sure he goes all the way out. And then here, looking at the radar again, just making sure he doesn't get on my right hand side here because there's enough uh, opportunity to go for a pass. So I'm just going to go fully defensive to the right hand side, hope that he commits to the left. This is, this is the lesson I learned racing against David Perrell, professional racing driver, very fast driver in Gran Turismo Sport. But um, he would commit to the uh, outside and then switch back to the inside at the last moment. And he's overtaken me doing that before. So you do have to be careful with defending and committing to one side because the, the guy behind can just switch all of a sudden. And uh, you might have seen that move I did at Interlagos a couple of weeks ago, or a week or so ago. Uh, just switching back to the inside. Carl Sainz did it in F1 as well. And so it's quite tricky. Uh, defending and getting it dead right but again this tr this track lends itself to defending it's just almost impossible to, to overtake unless you really do have a massive car benefit or the car ahead makes a big mistake so it's about keeping you cool I still like this race even though this race was fairly uh, processional it's still one where you're right on the edge at all times because if you make one little mistake then you can lose a position and that's what it all comes down to really just making sure you don't do any any mistakes for about 10 minutes of racing, so about 18 minutes of racing, try not to not make any errors. That's why it is still a good test of uh, skill. So coming around towards the last couple of corners on lap number four. So we've kept him at bay so far, but he is very close, you can see it there. Onto the main straight for the fourth time, or the end of the fourth lap, should I say. And he's not actually taking the slipstream. So I'm just looking behind there, he's not, he's not taking it. I'm not sure why. Maybe he wants to get a better run out of the corner and go for a move up towards the next corner instead. So through the apex. The car's not that great on the brakes. So he does gain a little bit there. 
but not enough to go for a move. So we're still ahead. We can just take the normal racing line. No need to defend here, unless he's going to go for a savage lunge. And this is something I spoke about, I think, in the, um, the sportsmanship video I did very recently. And that is, I suppose in these lobbies, people know what kind of moves they can go for. So those moves there are the distance they, uh, the guy was behind. He knows he can't go for a savage lunge from that far back. Whereas in the lower rated lobby, people see a gap and they think, oh, okay, I'll go for it. And it probably won't end in a, in a clean move. So I suppose it does, def uh, you know, it does depend on which type of lobby you're in. And that's why it is, you know, kind of crucial to get a, a good sportsmanship rating and ideally a better driver rating. And then you get matched up with people who respect the rules a little bit better or, you know, they know how to, how to overtake cleanly. Um, and you, you're, you're more likely to get a, a cleaner race that way. So we just panned back at a moment there. The guy in second is still okay. He's still got a gap to third, so he doesn't have to worry about defending. Uh, he can just go full out on attack. But at this point here, we're nearly halfway into the race. The lap times aren't that great. 47.2, 47.5, 48.0. Um, so I'm a good couple of seconds slower than what I should be able to do. Um, but it just shows you, this car and this track, it just lends itself to being able to defend. It's not over yet though. Half the race done. Uh, this, uh, this Audi might just be playing it patient. He might just be waiting for a good opportunity. He might not just want to force the issue. He's, you know, if he gets past me, he pretty much won the race. So he just needs to make sure that he goes for one move that works rather than fighting too much. And that would invite uh, the group from behind to come up and try to attack him, which of course he doesn't want. So I'm using the BMW Z4. And this kind of screamed at me of being one of the worst cars in Group 3. Although having said that, it's not feeling too bad. It's, it's not, the pace isn't great, but it doesn't feel totally bad. It's just very understeery. Uh, but I, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on what the worst cars are. I think there's a couple of shouts. We've got the, maybe the Evo, Lancer Evo, or the Hyundai Genesis, um, or maybe the BMW M3 GT car. There are quite a few poss possibilities out there, maybe even the Viper. There's quite a few cars which are definitely not on for good, uh, good pace at all. Uh, but there's lots of different things that a car can be good and bad at. You know, tyre wear, uh, brakes, top speed, acceleration out of corners, depending on which type of corner, medium speed, low speed. Um, just general stability, tyre wear, uh, fuel use. There's so many things that a car can be good or bad at. But this one, actually, the tyre wear doesn't feel too bad. I must say that. Uh, from the start to the race to the end of the race, uh, so from the start to now, it doesn't feel too different. Um, so that is perhaps a good thing. The tyre wear isn't absolutely awful. So I think that is maybe one thing about the R8. The tyres do begin to go off if you don't manage your tyres correctly. Okay, so he's as close as he has ever been as we start lap number seven. He's tucked into the slipstream. He's going to go to the left-hand side again. Bit of deja vu here. Uh, pin him to the outside. Hit your marker. Don't out. There's no need to really outbreak yourself. Just hit the, hit the marker that you need to hit. Going over to the right hand side again, having to defend into the next corner. And he's got a car which they decide not to go for. He's going to go around the outside instead, and he sweeps through on the left hand side, the outside, and he's actually going to get the move done. And I must be honest, that was a really good move. I wasn't quite sure exactly where he was, as um. He, he kept me on the inside basically, he kept me on the right hand side, the inside, and then he swept around the outside, and to be fair pulled off a really good move. So now rolls reversed, could I defend for an entire race? Not quite, I think it's possible, but on that occasion he just pulled off a really good move, and I couldn't quite defend against it, I didn't quite see it coming, so I'm going to have to go back at him. Uh, so I think, I mean, you know, this could be a difficult part of the race, it looks like he is quick, that Audi R8 is a fast car. We have to try to keep up with him the best we can. We have the advantage, of course, of having the slipstream. So I just have to absolutely make sure that this, these next few laps or this lap aren't too slow. I need to keep keep up with him the best I can to give myself any chance of trying to get back at him. But again, we just saw it for the first first six, seven laps. It's not easy to overtake. So you really have to kind of force your opponent into going offline. That's exactly what you did to me. Uh, he, he got so close that I had to defend, I had to move off the line, the ideal line, and then he took advantage of it. 
and it was a really good move. So I kind of have to do the same to him, get close and uh, force him to go somewhere that he doesn't really want to go and then try something, try something cunning and wacky. We'll see if it can happen. Coming down towards turn one, you see just how long this car takes to get up to speed. I suppose that's another thing that's not that great about it. It's sort of this mid-speed acceleration coming out of those medium-speed corners. It's not brilliant. Fairly close, though, out of the exit of turn one. Am I close enough to go for a move? He just knows that I'm not quite close enough to go for that move. It, if, I mean, I could absolutely lunge for it, but there's no way that's going to happen without contact. So we have to back out and just, just wait for now. We've still got two and a half laps left to go. So it's definitely not over yet. Although, again, so hard to just pass around here. I just wish they would choose some different tracks because Autopolis is just one of those tracks that it's just almost impossible to do anything around here. And I've had many races in, these, in this daily race where it's just a train. Even the guy, the, you know, the guy in the lead of the, of the train is, is slower, but he just can't get past, and, or no one can get past him because, um, because of the nature of the circuit. And you've got a train of like five, six, seven cars just just um, going around like a procession, like Monaco Grand Prix or something. But he's made it work on me. I'm going to try and make it work on him with two and a bit laps left to go. We don't really have anyone else to worry about. It's another 1v1, essentially. I've had plenty of really good 1v1s. I, I might have to make a playlist for them. Because the amount of um, like amazing direct battles I've had is probably six or seven which have gone down to the wire for the entire race which is pretty good you know a 1v1 for a good 15 20 minutes where neither of you can get away from the other and then you're constantly overtaking or working to keep the other at bay okay so the lap times have kind of settled there mid 47s although we did a 48 one lap seven looking up the inside are we close enough to go for the move yes we are the space opens up late on the brakes we just go side by side through the corner I have to leave him space on the outside he's still there but we've completed the move. So that one kind of came out of nowhere. It took an eternity to even come alongside. But we've got the job done. And we've retaken the position. I'm surprised he didn't defend that one. Perhaps he just was aware that my brakes weren't amazing. But I think on that one, on that occasion, just managed to make the, the move work. Up the inside. Pretty much hit the brakes exactly where I needed to. Hit the apex. I think there might have been a slight rub side by side with each other. But I'm... Um, I'm not sure if there was, but it was, it was very close either way. We get through just fine, and now we have a lap and a half to keep him at bay at once again. So very interesting race this one, in terms of the positioning, the fact that he got past. I, I would have thought that that would be race over, but he couldn't actually really pull away at all. Just managed to keep with him, but he's going to keep with me now, with uh, one and a half laps left to go. It's really a case of, I'm just already thinking about it the exit of the final corner onto this onto the main straight and um, that, that's going to be his best opportunity i think down into turn one lap 10 if he can do that then that's going to be his uh, best best chance to get back past me either that or the next corner as again he can get me out of position and uh, try to go for a pass at the next turn instead so through here just focus on the line make sure you get this right good exit straighten it up for the corner exit onto the main straight for the 10th time the whole straight the last time we're going to go down the, the entirety of the straight so this is his best chance i think he's tucked into that slipstream once again i'm just going to hug the inside hug the inside and then at the last minute move over to the left and the crucial thing here as we get a bit of understeer make sure we don't open up the inside here you can see on the radar if you just look at the radar there he got a bit of a uh, bit of oversteer so he's lost some crucial momentum. He can't go for the move into this turn. So I think that's his two best overtaking opportunities on this lap have gone. Turns one and turns uh, three. So now it's just a, a case of survival. Don't do anything really stupid. Don't bottle it. And we have won a race in the BMW Z4 aircraft carrier. HMS Z4 is gonna win a race not quite he's still very close although to be fair he's actually dropped off a tiny amount into the hairpin not taking a defensive line he's not close enough there's no need to do that so there's no point in putting yourself under pressure there's a race that sticks out in my mind it was um i think it was 2005 suzuka he had ed um it's a seven jesus he had um Fisichella versus raikkonen and Fisichella defended the last chicane when he didn't have to and therefore he got a really bad exit 
onto the main straight and Kimi Raikkonen went past him. I think it was 2005. It might be 2006. It was about about that time. And it just shows you, you know, don't defend when you don't have to because it's just going to put you out of position. You're going to lose time and potentially get overtaken. Loads of understeer there. Is he close enough? Just looking in the rearview mirror. Not quite because this corner here, uh, not really a long braking zone at all. And you kind of just throw it in, trail break it in. On the exit, we have won the race in the BMW Z4. I couldn't quite defend for the whole race, but for most of it, I think about eight laps I spent in the lead. 18 minutes, one second. So it was actually only a couple of seconds slower than what I did in the McLaren and the Porsche. And uh, that's not too bad a performance considering we were fighting throughout the whole race or defending for a lot of it. But there we go, a hat trick of wins. So an absolute rarity on the Super GT channel. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. Bit of a weird one, this this track, because, because of the nature of it, it's very difficult to overtake. But it kind of shows you, if you can get a good qualifying grid slot, then, well, you can pretty much hold people at bay for the entirety of the race. But there we go. I do hope you enjoyed the video as always. Let me know your thoughts. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.